Bismillah, Salaam Alaikum, peace be with you. Welcome to another episode of Ask Kuda. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us our beloved Shaykh, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh and thank you, Omar. And I would like to remind our viewers of our telephone number, which is 002 0238 555 248 or 249, or you can email us your questions at ask at huda.tv. Sheikh, I would like to go to a pending question that we have from Brother Sami in Nigeria. He asks, are the Shiites or the Shia disbelievers? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa laaqibatu lil muttaqeen. Wa laaudwana illa ala al-zalimeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidi al-Awaleen wa al-Akhirin. Nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. I praise Allah alone and I send the best peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I do believe that the, the, the question is presented right on time, even though, as I promised before, it was not engineered, nor was it prearranged. It just popped up as a pending question. Um, it is very important to understand as a mainstream of uh, the Ummah and uh, Sunni Muslims, that Shia is generally speaking, is a different faith. Have nothing really to do with the principles of Islam. There are many different sects of Shia which deviated from Shia themselves. And the Shia themselves have denounced them, such as Ismailis, etc. They're totally disbelievers. So it is hard to say yeah, all the Shia are disbelievers because there are many people who were born in Shia, uh, they think it's a sect of Islam, and they don't know what Shia is. I was exposed to many of them in the West, and after explaining the true essence of the deen, they have come back to the falls of Islam. So that's why I would say, the following principles, which Shia base their belief or faith on, which is basically nothing but a myth, are considered disbelief. So whoever believes in the following, he is not considered as one of the Muslims or the mainstream of the Ummah, such as denouncing and blasphemizing, uh, blasphemy, uh, 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 giving blasphemy or uh, to blaspheme um, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, and insult them or curse them or judge them as upstates or disbelievers. And this is basically one of the great principles of uh, the Shia faith or belief. For instance, what uh, the entire Muslim world have witnessed recently, there is um, a Shia clerk who was one day a Kuwaiti and the Kuwaiti government just... Uh, stripped him from the citizenship because of his disbelief. He declared disbelief by insulting and cursing and falsely uh, accusing the mother of the believers, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Accusing her with so many awful things that I cannot repeat what he said. It's all over on the uh, blogs and websites. But I do not even advise to review or reiterate what he said. Rather, I would like to use one reference, which is collected by Imam al-Asbahani, may Allah have mercy on him in this regard. And I believe personally, it is more than sufficient. Once, one of those guys, uh, because this sect erected at the time, after the demise of the Prophet ﷺ, particularly uh, by the end of the era of the Khilafah of Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah uh, be pleased with him, due to the conflict between him and Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, may Allah be pleased with all of them. So the mother of the believers, Aisha, was mentioned before this guy. So he uh, insulted her. 
And they said to him, how could you insult your mother? Because the Quran says, وَأَزْوَاجُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ The wives of the Prophet ﷺ are the mothers of the believers. So he said, she is not my mother. So when they mentioned that to the mother of the believers, Aisha, رضي الله تعالى عنها وأرضها, guess what? She said, well, he's right. He spoke in the truth. He said, how? She said, I'm only a mother of the believers. And I'm not a mother of the disbelievers. Look at the hikmah and the wisdom of Aisha because she is confirming what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said from above the seven heavens. That وَأَزْوَاجُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ Every single marriage of the Prophet ﷺ was pre-planned by, the, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, there was a direct divine command to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through angel uh, Gibrali, peace be upon him, to marry Aisha. Even though she was very young, he came with, his pic- with her picture and said, she is your wife in this life and in the hereafter. And he proceeded on by engaging her and asking her hand from her father Abu Bakr Siddiq and so on. One more very interesting reference, which is when... Uh, the great companion Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, was appointed by the Prophet sallallahu as a commander of chief on one of the uh, on the Muslim army in one of the battles, which is known as Ghazwat Zat al-Salasa. He achieved victory over the enemies, and when he uh, returned to al Madina victorious, delivering the good news to the Prophet sallallahu he wanted to seize this opportunity and gain such an honor from the Prophet ﷺ or a word of praise. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, whom do you love most? Immediately, without hesitation, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, Aisha. He said, well, I do not mean of women or of your wives. I really meant of men. He said, her father. He said, then whom? He said, then Umar. Then obviously the hadith was speaking about Uthman, then Ali, then Amr ibn As just gave up. But the hadith, the catch in the hadith, that the very first name popped up in the mind of the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked, whom do you love most? He said, Aisha. And uh, once the Prophet ﷺ said to his most beloved, his daughter, Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the wife of Ali, the mother of Al-Hasan al Hussein. He said, O oh Fatima, I love this woman, Al-Humayra, Aisha. So if you love me, you gotta love her. Imagine, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is telling his daughter that if you truly love me, then you have to love what I love. How could the Prophet sallallahu alayhi love something that is bad? Or how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for him something that doesn't suit him? While he is the, the, the chosen prophet and the greatest of mankind and the greatest of every creature at all. Furthermore, once Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa narrated in a hadith that is collected uh, by Tirmidhi and judged as Hassan or fair by Al-Bani. May Allah have mercy on him. She said, once... I was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I felt that he is having some good time and he's in good conditions. So I said, O Messenger of Allah, pray for me. So I said, Allahumma ghfir li Aisha ma qaddamat wa ma akharat wa ma asrarat wa ma a'lanat. Such a beautiful invocation. He said, O oh Allah, forgive Aisha for whatever sin she has done in the past or will do in the future, the very first and the very last, and obviously what's in between. Not only that, وَمَا أَسْرَرَتْ وَمَا أَعْلَنَتْ And whatever she concealed, whatever she disclosed. So, Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها وأرضاها smiled and laughed until her head fell in the lap of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, you liked what I said? She said, of course I did. The Prophet ﷺ said, By Allah, O Aisha, this is my prayer for my ummah in every single salah.
اللهم اغفر لأمتي ما قدمت وما أخرت وما أسررت وما أعلنت and he used to call her عائش that was what we call it a spoiling name and uh, the, 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 the books of Sunan are full of a hadith specifying Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa abdaha with the love that was not given to any one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to the extent when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa fell very ill approaching his last days uh, the rest of his wives recognized that how much he loved Aisha so they all agreed there was a general consensus between them that let us let the Prophet ﷺ spend the remaining days of his life in her room. When the angel of death descended to take the soul of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, there was nobody in the room but the Prophet and Aisha. And he died while his head was in her lap. How could all of that happen while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not happy with her? While the Prophet ﷺ does not love her? What he said explicitly that she was his most beloved. There is a list of a hadith, I believe, inshallah, we're arranging for an independent episode to speak about the merits uh, and the virtues of the great mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and So one of the principles of the Shia is to criticize and insult and uh, do blasphemy to the companions of the Prophet sallallahu particularly Abu Bakr wa Umar whom the Prophet ﷺ counted countless hadith and glad tidings and good news he delivered personally to these two companions. In addition to what the Qur'an talked about them, we need several episodes to speak about their merits. May Allah be pleased uh, with all of them. The second is, they believe in particular Privileges to Ali superior to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and were not given even to prophets. They believe in their twelve imams that they have merit superior to those of the prophets, such as the knowledge of the unseen, such as infallibility, and all of that. And another very important thing, which is at taqiyya at taqiyya uh, is a, a trait of uh, the hypocrites, which is to disclose other than what you conceal. So they show you something while inside of them they, dis, they, 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 they conceal something different, particularly concerning the belief in the companions, in the Sunnah, in the Quran, etc. So whosoever is aware of that and he accepts that faith and belief, then he is not a Muslim. This person who criticized Aisha or insulted her or, 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 he is definitely not a Muslim. There is a general consensus between the scholars of Islam that one who denies the sunnah, the sound sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, is not a Muslim. Why? Because he denied the Qur'an. If you do not believe in the sunnah, you do not believe in the Qur'an. There is really a lot to talk. I would postpone talking about this issue, perhaps in the, in the uh, independent issue of uh, the merits of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. JazakAllah khair for that uh, very detailed answer, Shaykh. We have on the line right now Brother Muhammad from the United States of America. Go ahead, Brother, with your question, please. Oh, I think we lost uh, Brother Muhammad there. I think we have Um Amar from Egypt. Are you there, sister? Assalamu alaikum, sister. Okay, I think uh, we lost Sister Amar as well. We can go back to some of these pending questions insha'Allah. We have uh, Samra from the United Arab Emirates uh, would like to know if you could tell us more about the Prophet Dhul Kifl. Well, uh, Dhul Kifl was mentioned a couple of times in the Quran and uh, basically there is not much information about him in the Sunnah and that's why the scholars and the companions differed whether he was a prophet or one of the righteous people. Either way, he was one of the children of Israel. So he followed a prophet and he succeeded him in delivering the message. And they say